Now there is absolutely tons of different ways to create awesome basing for tabletop miniatures or really super hyper realistic scenery for a diorama. Now sometimes a ready-made solution actually works really really well and sometimes not. Now this is the AK Interactive's Sandy Desert. Not to be confused with its kind of sister products, Desert Sand, which is the basic same stuff but a different colour. But today we're looking at just this one. On its own, what is the sort of results you can get? What is it good at? What is it not so good at? And is this the right sort of thing for you and your project? Let's find out. Now, as always, this video is not sponsored. It's all about exploring what's out there and helping you find the right tool for your project. Now, after looking at this, if you do think it is right for you, then I'll put some links down in the description for you. Okay, let's get going. So this is AK Interactive's Sandy Desert. Now, this is an acrylic. Now, Sandy Desert is designed to recreate a desert terrain. Now, there's two types to this. You've got the Sandy Desert and the Desert Sand. The desert sand is a lot paler, uh, whereas the sandy desert is a more reddy color and it's a bit thicker as well. Now, according to the marketing, at least if you use the sandy desert as a kind of base and then use the desert sand as uh, almost like a highlight or in certain places for thinner, more uh, turned over, lighter sand, drier sand, then it's meant to be able to give a really super hyper realistic result. That we'll find out, but for now we're looking at just this one. Now once again, according to the marketing, you can use it in both fine and in thick layers, and also you can water it down or use acrylic thinner to uh, to thin it down to make it flow better, if that's what you want. Now this tub I've been using for a little while, and you can see it's sort of dry out a little bit on the top edge there. As long as you keep the lid screwed down tight and keep the air out, then, then it will last for a very long time and you can keep coming back to it whenever you want. Now, as you can see there on the edge there, it's dried out a little bit, but also I found that's quite handy to, uh, that's slightly thicker to build in a bit more texture in places if you want it. So you can use the really thin stuff or the thicker stuff in different ways. Now to test this with you today, I wanna to use two different uh, test subjects. So first of all, I'm gonna use a standard tabletop miniature base but also I wanna use a bigger bit as well. So I'm gonna use this electrical junction box thing I found lying around after some DIY work. I can't remember what it is. If you know what it is, let me down in, know down in the comments. But it's got a nice smooth surface. So also one thing I wanna test is I wanna see how it grips to things. Now this is not primed, um, it's a smooth plastic surface. So half of it I'm gonna leave completely smooth and the other half I'm gonna add a bit of a key to it, a bit of a roughened surface with a sanding pad and see how, if there's any difference to how well it grips to plastic. Now to apply this stuff, you can use an old paintbrush, but what I found if you're trying to apply it to a small surface like a tabletop miniature base, and you've already got the miniature stuck in place, but with an old paintbrush with splayed out bristles, for example, there's a risk of getting this stuff onto your nice clean paintwork. We don't want it to be. So the best thing I've found for this is actually a sculpting tool. Now you can use either the metal one, but also what I found it works really well is using a silicon sculpting tool like this. It's nice and soft, so it allows you to create uh, texture in it, but also that nice sharp tip allows you to push the sound effect paint around into all the little nooks and crannies uh, with a lot more accuracy as well. So for this bigger piece, I'm just gonna slather it on quite a thick layer, not too thick, not being particularly neat with it and just covering the entire thing. I'm gonna try and leave it a little bit so therefore I can see, easily see which bit is the smooth and which bit is the rougher area, but just kind of cover it over. Now in a real sandy desert, what you often find is you get the texture in the sand where, the, where it's kind of windblown, but in the areas where you've had uh, traffic, either lots of footfall or vehicles are driven through quite a lot, then it tends to be a lot smoother and uh, fluffier essentially. So the way I'm gonna try and recreate this kind of uh, smoother, fluffier sand is by getting some water on the sculpting tool and just use that to smooth it out a little bit and see what effect that has.
and cleaning up the silicon tool afterwards is really, really easy. Just swish it around in some clean water, probably not the main water you use for your paints because there's gonna be some grit in there and that could mess up with your brushes. But some clean water and then wipe it off with a clean kitchen towel. And that's it, simple as that. Okay, so we've now applied it over two flat surfaces. So a larger one and a smaller one. But how easy is it to apply around an already painted model that you want, then want to base? So let's try that out. So this is a Orc Commando model, which I painted up the other day. And scooping out a small amount of that AK Interactive Sandy Desert, you can just use the tip of that silicon tool to just float it in, just kind of almost like a stippling motion, and just float it in around the model. And that stippling motion kind of allows that paint to kind of flow against the model, and uh, so you, you're not kind of going over it too much, you're not uh, making much of a mess. But also I found that stippling motion gives a nice texture to it as well. Okay, so we've let those dry. Now this stuff, especially in thin layers, doesn't take a huge amount of time to dry, depending on the temperature and humidity and everything else. But 20 minutes, half an hour, and it's, it's kind of good to go. So first of all, looking at that small base again. So that's given quite a nice texture. Now deliberately, I was fairly messy with it, and I went over the edges of the base, and you could cover the entire thing if you wanted to. I wanted to show you how you can then tidy that up after it's dried. Now looking at the big bits, now once again you've got quite a nice texture there, it's covered it quite nicely. Now I want to see how tough it is, so I'm going to try and just give it a fair amount of pressure and see if I can get that paint to come away. Now on the smooth side that it wasn't primed and also I gave it no key as well, nothing to stick to, it has peeled away quite easily, so that's something to be aware of, of a smooth plastic. However, the side that I once again, didn't prime, but I simply just gave it a bit of a key. I roughed it up a little bit. That's, I can't get that off. I'm applying quite a lot of pressure. In fact, more pressure than I did on the other side, and it ain't coming off. So therefore, if you give it something to stick to, then it's quite tough stuff. Okay, so I said I would show you how you can tidy up if you've made a bit of a mess over the edge on a small base, for example. Now, once it's dry, it's as simple as getting a hobby knife, or in this case, a uh, file, and just kind of go around and scraping it around the edges. And using the flat of the blade against the edge of the rim and scraping it around, and it'll carve away quite nicely, leaving a nice crisp edge. And once you've done that, you can then simply get your preferred color, in this case, a chocolate brown, and just paint the rim edge to make it nice and neat. So, okay, so, we found that this stuff can create quite a nice sandy effect. But why not just use sand in the first place? Now don't get me wrong, using things like sand and mud and stones and twigs can get you some amazing results. And we'll look at those in another video. But what I would say is for this particular scenario, a coarse sand is not necessarily going to be the best idea. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to simply get a upturned small milk carton and in this case, I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to paint it brown, and then also then apply some glue over the top of that, and then just, and then stick some of this builder sand to it. Now you can, now obviously you can apply more glue and build up layers, uh, add in some stones and that sort of stuff, but this simple layer of sand will kind of show you what I mean. So having let that dry, you've now got quite a flat effect. There's not a huge amount of, uh, texture in there apart from the individual grains of sand. Now you can just put the glue over it and then sand and even then paint it, but you will get a very 90s Warhammer type effect. Let me know down in the comments if you remember that. But the biggest thing I've got with this is the scale. So if I put the real sand next to the desert sand effect paint, you can see that the it's a lot grainier. The, the grains of sand on the, the real sand are a lot bigger, which are then out of scale with the model. It's more like gravel compared to sand. And of course, if you're looking for gravel, then fantastic, that's great. That's not what we're looking for here. So, in summary, what I would say is that the AK Interactive Sandy Desert is really good for creating a very quick and easy sand, desert sand, effect. Now if you like in the future we can have a look at it combined with the desert sand 
to see if you can kind of create a that hyper real effect that the marketing says you can achieve. However, what I would say is this stuff is going to be great if you are using uh, tabletop miniatures, for example, and you want to have quick and easy but still effective sand desert sand effect for your bases. In fact, when it comes to larger models and desert dioramas, it does kind of get you thinking, doesn't it? Now, if you got value from this content, if you enjoyed it or you learned something new, then please hit the like button. If there's a bit of kit that you would like me to test out, then please let me know down in the comments. And I'll see you on the next project.